France faces the sixth day of rioting. Over 150 people have been arrested overnight in connection to the violence that has rocked cities across the country following the killing of a teenager of North African descent by a police officer. The relative calm followed by five nights of heavy riots offered some relief to the government of Emmanuel Macron in its fight to regain control of the situation. Remember, since the death of 17-year-old Nahel on June 27th, rioters have torched cars, looted stores and targeted town halls and other properties with flashpoints in cities including Paris, Strasbourg in the east and Marseille and Nice in the south. Les plateformes et les réseaux sociaux jouent un rôle considérable dans les mouvements des derniers jours. Social media platforms play a significant role in the events of the past few days. It sometimes feels like some of them are experiencing in the streets the video games that have intoxicated them. On this, the law, including over the past few months, has set out changes to parent control that we want to be fully respected. In the coming hours, we will take measures, and we have started taking measures in coordination with these platforms to remove the most sensitive content. The authorities are working in coordination with these platforms to obtain an effective response. One third of the people arrested last night were young. It is the responsibility of the parents to keep them at home. Today, there is shock and anger, and it's up to the courts to respond. The shocking images broadcast yesterday show an intervention that clearly does not seem to comply with the rules of engagement of our law enforcement officers. Celui de l'exemplarité. Les images choquantes diffusées hier montrent une intervention qui ne semble manifestement pas conforme aux règles d'engagement de nos forces de l'ordre. And joining us on the broadcast is David Chazan, journalist who's reporting from Paris. Thank you, David, for joining us on CNN News 18 in the wake of the violence that has engulfed the city of Paris and many other places across France. Now, what, in your opinion, has engineered this violence to last for so long? Okay, the initial spark was the death of a 17-year-old French Algerian boy at the wheel of a car. And the police initially said that they opened fire because the car was being driven at speed towards two officers. Then uh, footage filmed on a mobile phone by a bystander emerged that appears to contradict that. And it shows the car stationary, the two officers beside it, one of them pointing a gun at the boy, and then you hear a shot going off. Now, that footage went viral on social media and it made people, particularly uh, members of France's uh, minority ethnic communities, very angry. And I think the explosion of rage that we've witnessed on French streets over the past six nights, okay, it was triggered by that one incident, but young people from the minority communities say, this isn't an isolated incident, and the only reason the police officer is now in jail, charged with murder, uh, awaiting trial, is because that footage came out. Otherwise, the police mm -hmm. version would have stood. And they say that they face disproportionate police harassment, job discrimination, they live in deprived areas with poor housing, often in social housing. There's a whole litany of complaints. And even people who are third or fourth generation immigrants in France say they're not fully accepted as French and they're treated as second class citizens. Having said that, as the rioting has progressed, there's definitely a criminal looting element opportunistically joining in. But the anger among these communities is real. Nevertheless, um, I've talked to a lot of people in the suburbs over the past few days and members of the minority communities, and they say, we condemn this violence. We hate what's going on. This is our own neighborhoods that are being smashed up and vandalized. Nevertheless, the issues of discrimination and racism are genuine. But David, you're talking about, uh, you know, racism faced by the minority communities of uh, France, which 
in your opinion, is pushing the violence to this extent. Now, given the polarized nature of French politics, is there space left in the public sphere to discuss uh, these issues of discrimination faced by minorities and immigrants? I wouldn't say it's disappeared, no. I think it's very much there. But I think the longer the violence and the vandalism continue, then the more support the far-right leader Marine Le Pen is likely to gain because people want this to stop. They want it to stop now. And if they start to believe that the centrist president, President Macron, is not capable of doing that, well, they're going to say, why not turn to a tough talking populist like Le Pen, who's promising to restore law and order and see if she can do better. And remember, this comes at a time when although the government and the president are centrist, uh, French politics is more polarized than it has been for decades. And the main opposition to President Macron is the far right and the far left. Now, the far right saying you've got to declare a state of emergency and curtail civil liberties. The far left is saying, oh, this is all the fault of governments who haven't addressed the problems in uh, the deprived suburbs properly. They haven't improved services and housing, and they're not dealing fairly with these communities. So an extremely polarized situation now. Absolutely. But when it comes to the racism charge that you're talking about, we're not seeing that conversation taking place. Uh, in French politics for now. Everyone is focusing on a very polarized narrative surrounding these riots. Uh, but David, so much violence after the pension protests, it's a bad time to be Emmanuel Macron. No, he's not very lucky, is he? I mean, first of all, he had the yellow vest protests after he tried to increase fuel taxes. They were mainly white people who felt left behind. They were from small towns and rural areas. Then you saw the protests over the pension reforms. Macron wanted to raise the pension age by two years. He couldn't get it through, or he feared that he wouldn't be able to get it through Parliament with a vote. So he pushed it through using an executive decree mechanism with no vote in Parliament. That created a lot of anger and people took to the streets. But one thing I think you've got to remember about France, it's a very different political tradition, say, from in Britain. And um, ever since the French Revolution or before, street violence has been part of French politics. More recently, in the 20th century, and even in the 21st century, successive French governments have been known to do U-turns when faced with mass protests in the streets. So that's why people in France think, well, if we take to the streets, that's a way to influence government policy. I think in a country like Britain, um, people just think the government's not gonna pay attention. They'll get the police out, they'll stop the protests, and then they'll carry on.